Hello, hello, and welcome to Self Care is Sexy. My name is Chris, and I'll be your host. We're a podcast that's here to generate and share self care ideas with each other. Last episode, I talked about preventative and restorative self care. I walked us through all the different benefits of each, as well as a ton of different examples. If you're looking for a deep dive into very different but very effective types of self-care, make sure to check that episode out. You can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podbean, Podnation, and even at our website, www.selfcareissexy.com. I want to give you a quick preview of what to expect from today's show. Today, I want to share with you something that I recently learned that has really changed my self-care completely, and it's really given me this whole new level up that I want you to experience right alongside me. So today, I'm going to share with you what I've learned about manufactured pressure and how just knowing what it is that it exists and how to spot it is really going to help you so much in all the areas of your life, not just in self-care. But first, a few quick housekeeping notes. All right, welcome back. I'm so happy that you're joining us today. And I really just wanted to share something with you that I learned that's really changed my life. And I want to pass it along because I really think that this is going to help a lot of people, not just with self-care, but like in all the areas of our life. If you are brand new to the show and you're just checking me out because you need some help taking care of yourself, I really think that today's topic is going to be a game changer. And if you've been listening along forever and you still need help getting yourself to take that time that you need for self-care, I really think that this is going to be something that you can apply to not only self-care, but other parts of your life as well. So just to kind of give you a little bit of background, I recently came to understand this entire concept once I was diagnosed with ADHD. So over the pandemic, like everyone else, my life slowed way down and I had a lot of extra time to really just sit in the suck and figure out what I needed to do for myself. And one of the things that came out of the pandemic was realizing and being diagnosed with ADHD, which if anybody knows me, if they've known me for a long period of time, it's pretty damn obvious. And people that I love and cared about me have told me for years that I have it, but I never really took that actual step until the pandemic. I had like a manic cleaning episode where we were all working from home and I had to find ink for this really old printer in order to do my job. And while tearing apart my entire office, I found a letter from six or seven years ago that was a recommendation letter from my primary care physician telling me that I needed to be evaluated for ADHD. And I have been putting it off and putting it off and not making it a priority. And in the midst of this, not even joking, six-hour manic cleaning episode, it finally dawned on me. I started out looking for printer ink and ended up rearranging my entire home office. If that does not signal that you might have ADHD, I don't know what will. Because yes, getting distracted while you're looking for something, totally 100% normal. Then taking six hours to completely redo a room, not exactly on the like normal spectrum. So anyway, I went and got checked out. I went to the adult psychiatry department. I got diagnosed with ADHD. And for the first three or four months, we sort of, you know, changed the medication, changed the levels, got to a really good fit. During one of the check-ins, we we were just talking about life and, and, you know, how it's going and everything. And I had this incredible revelation during my session that has completely changed everything that I'm doing as far as taking care of myself and self-care in general. And I just want to share this with you because I don't think this is something that folks really think about a lot. But I've talked to hundreds of people, hundreds of very different people about what they do for self-care. Everyone I talk to about self-care and what barriers they encounter, 
everybody says one of the biggest barriers that they have to taking care of themselves or making themselves a priority is is that they're busy, is that they've got so much going on. And yes, this is actually true for a lot of people. But for a lot of us, we're not really seeing the truth, which is being busy is a choice. And what I want to share with you today is a concept that I came up with and talked to my doctor about that I I called manufactured pressure. The biggest realization I've come to with, with getting diagnosed with ADHD and really taking better care of myself is that I have created a lot of manufactured pressure for myself. And when I started sort of talking to people and kind of asking around, a lot of other people are doing this too. So when I, when I say manufactured pressure, what do I mean? What I mean is manufactured pressure is those unchecked thoughts or, or worry that our brain likes to just make up. And it does that because it's trying its damnedest to keep us safe. Because our brains are pretty prehistoric. They haven't really developed all that much. And they're pretty damn good at keeping us away from predators, seeking out safety, seeking out certainty, and playing scenarios over and over and over again. Now, I know in previous episodes, I've talked about the RAS, the reticular activative system in your brain that loves patterns. If you want a deeper dive on this, Mel Robbins has a great book called The High Five Habit. Check it out. I'll I'll put a link in the show notes that goes way into all of the sort of nitty gritty about that RAS system and how it works. But basically, it's that idea like you buy a car, a brand new car, and you see that car everywhere you go. It's your brain remembering to tell you what's important based on what you've told it it's important. And so manufactured pressure is your brain putting your worries and your unchecked negative thoughts on repeat because it's trying to protect you from them. So it's looking everywhere for examples of where you're going to find this problem. So if you're worried about having enough time to do self-care, your brain is literally going to seek out examples proving that you don't have enough time for self-care. And unfortunately, our brains are really, really good at this. And getting it to stop is pretty much impossible. So what we really want to focus on is instead of trying to stop our brains from looking for those patterns, we just want to look for different patterns. Number two, another example of what manufactured pressure is, or what I mean when I use that phrase, is that it it really is this mindset that's used to control you. So whereas it's, it's generated from within, it's coming from your own brain, it's also a patternistic thinking that is used to kind of control your behavior, control your emotions, and in control what you do. It keeps you in a constant state of you will do the same thing over and over and over again. Because again, our brains love repeat. They love being on autopilot. They love checking out and just doing things with the least amount of effort because your brain is really responsible for a lot of like behind the scenes shit. And so all of the conscientious stuff about your behavior, your thoughts, your emotions, all that stuff, that takes a little bit extra brain work. So when we talk about manufactured pressure in this episode today, I want you to be thinking about it as this tool that your brain is using to control you. It's trying to, like like the bumpers at the bowling alley, it's trying to get your ball to stay in the lane. Whereas outside of the lane might be the courage and the new pattern to have a completely different life right? You might be continually doing the same things over and over again, overextending yourself, saying yes to social obligations, really like taking on all the laundry, all the dishes, all the, all the vacuuming, all the groceries, all of those things, taking all of that on for your entire household. And manufactured pressure just tells you, yes, keep doing that over and over and over again. 
Whereas stepping outside of that and taking an hour for yourself to read, to relax, to take a bath, to go for a walk, to drink some tea and do some self-care, that is outside those bumpers. Number three, manufactured pressure is only one side of the story. And this is so important. I really hope that you'll hear this. I hope that this resonates with you. And I hope that you'll be thinking about this throughout the next week as you're going through your week and you're, and you're thinking about self-care and doing self-care. When we talk about how busy we are, when we talk about all these obligations that we must do, you are really only telling one side of the story, which is I'm choosing to do this long list of things none of which are for me. So manufactured pressure is only the side of the story that says, I'm doing all these things. I have to do all these things. If I don't do all these things, these, th- these things won't get done and my life will fall apart. Right? And so if you are the type of person that's like, I have to do the laundry every week or I'm not going to have clean underwear for the week. Right? Your brain is trying to tell you that's it. That's the end of the story. Must do laundry. If I don't do laundry, I won't have clean laundry. The end. When the story, the other side of the story is you're choosing to do it. Somebody else could do it for you. I mean, Jesus, the truth is you could just go buy more underwear. I mean, right? Like your brain is only telling you one part of the story. When we're talking about manufactured pressure, it's only the part of the story that talks about being busy as not a choice, as something you can't get out of, as an obligation you can't get away from. And it doesn't tell you the rest of the story, that those obligations are a choice, that you can get out of them, and that there is time for you to take care of yourself. And last but not least, number four Manufactured pressure is something that you can change. You can actually create a different story. And you can actually be the kind of person that looks around their life and says, wow, I actually do have time. You can actually change the story, not by changing your schedule or trashing your to-do list, but just by changing the way you're thinking about it. Because again, manufactured pressure is just one side of the story. It's the negative side of the story. It's the side of the story that says everything on your to-do list is this horrible chore that you have to do and that you don't want to do it, and it's preventing you from doing the things you do want to do, like self-care. And that is really and literally and truly not true. The other side of the story is that you are choosing to do these things. If you want to make a different choice, you can. Manufactured pressure doesn't have to be this ball and chain that's shackled to you that you carry around or worse, this thing that you tote as like, you know, a badge of honor, right? Have you ever sat around and heard people talking about, oh my God, I'm so busy. Oh, you don't even know I have this, 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 this going on and I'm running crazy and I'm getting four hours of sleep and oh my God, grind, grind, grind. And, you know, just gotta, just gotta go kill it. Gotta live my best life, do all these things. And people talk about it in this culture as if it's this big, like, accomplishment that they should get a fucking award for how busy they are without thinking about how miserable that's making them. Okay, so now that we've got this foundation of what I'm talking about when I talk about manufactured pressure, I want to talk about how to spot it because it's really important that you see it coming. Then we're going to get to the other part is like, what do we do to help it? How do we, how do we help ourselves when we feel that manufactured pressure coming on? All right, number one, the best way to spot manufactured pressure is that you feel like you're about to cry from frustration. You're spinning around from one task to the next. You don't know how best to use your precious moments in the day, so you feel paralyzed to do nothing. You're just really like in that red zone of absolute, utter 
frustration and your head's in this negative.